A simple chemical cell can be set up using copper and zinc electrodes. Here we'll show you how it works. We'll construct this cell. We'll start with two empty containers. We'll place a strip of copper metal in one of them. We'll call this the copper electrode. A metal is composed of neutral atoms. We'll show a few neutral copper atoms on the surface of this electrode. In the other container, we'll place a piece of zinc metal, which we'll call the zinc electrode. We'll show a few neutral zinc atoms on this electrode. We obtain an ammeter. An ammeter measures the rate of flow of electrons, or current. We'll attach the ammeter to each electrode using conducting wires. Wires are composed of neutral atoms, which have the same number of protons as electrons. Because protons are positive, we'll represent protons in the wires by positive charges. And electrons are negative, so we'll represent electrons by negative charges. Protons in all materials are in fixed positions in the nuclei of the atoms, so they don't move in the wires. But in metals, electrons can move easily. In the container with the copper electrode, we add some copper 2 nitrate solution. Copper 2 nitrate consists of copper 2 plus ions and nitrate ions. These ions are free to move around in the solution. The three copper 2 plus ions we've represented here have a total charge of positive 6. And the six nitrate ions we've represented have a total charge of negative 6. So at this point, charges are balanced in this solution. In the beaker with the zinc electrode, we add zinc nitrate solution. Zinc nitrate solution consists of zinc 2 plus ions and nitrate ions. The zinc 2 plus ion we've represented here has a charge of positive 2. And the two nitrate ions we've represented here have a total charge of negative 2. So at this point, charges are also balanced in the solution. Between the two containers, we add an inverted U-tube with a solution of a salt like potassium nitrate, KNO3. We call this a salt bridge. KNO3 solution consists of K plus and NO3 minus ions. Like all ions in solutions, these ions are free to move. Now we'll focus on the zinc electrode and have a look at one of the zinc atoms. This atom loses two electrons and changes into a zinc 2 plus ion, as shown by the equation Zn gives Zn2 plus plus two electrons. This ion then leaves the metal and is dissolved in the solution. The electrons supplied by the zinc push the other electrons through the wire. Meanwhile, over at the copper electrode, a copper 2 plus ion moves to the surface of the electrode. The two extra electrons on the copper electrode move into the copper 2 plus ion. The copper 2 plus ion gains these electrons and changes into a neutral copper atom, as shown by the equation Cu2 plus plus two electrons forms Cu. This whole process keeps repeating itself, causing electrons to continuously move through the ammeter. Now we'll focus on the ions in the container with the copper 2 nitrate solution. In our example, one copper 2 ion was used up. The two copper ions that now remain have a total charge of positive 4. And the six nitrate ions have a total charge of negative 6. So there's an excess of negative charge in the solution in the container on the left. Now we'll focus on the container on the right with the zinc nitrate solution. In our example, one zinc 2 plus ion was produced. The two zinc 2 plus ions that are now present have a total charge of positive 4. And the two nitrate ions have a total charge of negative 2. So there is an excess of positive charge in the solution in the container on the right. In order to balance charges, positive ions tend to move toward the left through the salt bridge, away from the side with the excess positive charge and toward the side with the excess negative charge. 
and negative ions tend to move toward the container on the right, away from the side with excess negative charge and toward the side with excess positive charge. So the salt bridge is an important part of a chemical cell. It allows positive and negative ions to move through it so that charges in the solutions remain balanced. Without a salt bridge, a chemical cell would not work. If we were to replace the ammeter with a voltmeter, under what are called standard conditions, this cell would initially have a voltage of 1.1 volts. As this cell operates, zinc atoms will continue to dissolve to form zinc ions as they lose electrons. And copper 2 plus ions will continuously gain electrons as they form copper atoms. As zinc atoms on the electrode dissolve, and copper 2 plus ions in the copper 2 nitrate solution are used up, the voltage supplied by the cell will gradually decrease and will over time drop to zero.